Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Mioni here of the Clism Cast. Today I'm playing some Kerbal Space Program, or rather continuing my glorious Clism Space Program. Now, today I have a few things to show you. First of all, I have to admit I didn't post many videos recently. That's simply because, well, A, there's been a lot of Warcraft stuff to test, as you may have seen with the flooded Warcraft 5.3 content on the channel. But uh, hey, I've got some time now to actually invest in other games again. So here we are playing a bit of KSP. So last episode, if you can remember that long ago, I did say that this episode would be all about getting to the moon and landing, and that it would be somewhat different. Now, somewhat different because I will be using an experimental piece of engineering that I came up with. Uh, we're going with a bit of a space plane idea. And I loosely say space plane because it's only really space plane-ish in looks. Uh, it's designed to land as a space plane, uh, well, as a plane, but uh, that's about it really. The rest of it is pure rocket design. So obviously we have our two mainsails on the far sides here. I made a lot of adjustments after a few trial runs to make sure that they're at the right distance. Uh, I tried them a lot closer to the main body, but they just tore off. Uh, the other engines uh, when they needed to be detached. So obviously this girder helps uh, make sure that you know it only takes that with it instead of everything else if it gets detached. Uh, once those are fired, we have three nuclear-powered engines uh, in the center, and uh, essentially it looks a lot like a fighter plane, really, but made out of rocket. So um, yeah. Obviously this is designed uh, for maximum efficiency, so we've got these three chambers, these three white fuel tanks, and these three nuclear rockets. So obviously this isn't meant for atmospheric burns at all in the slightest, so this will be for moons and low gravity planets. So without further ado, let's get this on the launch pad and launch it. I have named it the Kerbin Galactic, you know, after the Virgin Galactic sort of idea, only this one will go much further than just an orbit. We are today heading for Minmus, which is the easier of the two moons to go to. So I thought that would be a good place to test this out. Obviously this has the capabilities of going much further with the uh, obviously the efficiency of these engines, but I've not really tested it out, so let's give it a go. So apparently our pilot today is Genold, or Genold? Yeah, Genold. Wow, that's such an unusual name, but Nevertheless, that's what his parents said about him, but he strived to be so much more. And now he's a Kerbinaut, which is fantastic. I'm sure his parents are very proud of him. So uh, let's whack this up. We're going to put it in a 100km orbit as per usual. And then once we're circularized up there, we're going to bend our way out towards Minmus itself. So yeah, let's just speed this up. We don't want to spend forever launching a rocket. So... It's all pretty much ready to go. You may have seen I've got some, uh, I think they're NatSav uh, satellite dishes, which are for mapping the ISA MapSat pack, I think it's actually called. And there we go, we've launched off the platform, these two mainsails. It looks like it's under a lot of stress and strain, but really it's not. The main uh, frame of the actual thing doesn't, la uh, doesn't actually weigh that much. I think it's just over 50 tons. So it's, it's it's not bad. Obviously, this isn't the most efficient way of launching it. Um, having the rockets closer to the bottom or you know closer to the actual main uh, vessel would obviously mean I wouldn't have to use quite so much fuel up uh, in the actual orbitary stage. However, nonetheless, it works and it works with a 90% degree of efficiency instead of tearing everything apart every time I tested it before. So as you can see, we're just over halfway through the fuel tanks and we're getting a bit of FPS lag. So for the benefit of the video, I'm going to cut across to uh, when the stable's out, stable's out again, just over, I think it's about 15,000 kilometers, and we'll pick up from there. So I lied, it didn't stable out until about 25,000 kilometers. We're now at 28 and rising. Uh, as you can see here, we do actually have a very clear window for the moon, but nevertheless, I am actually going to stick to my original goal. We are still going to Minmus, screw the moon, it can get out of my way, but it does look pretty awesome. So, uh, Genold here is uh, is basically using the leftover uh, thrust that we need to put this in orbit uh, with those three engines, the nuclear rockets here. Not very efficient, as you can tell, but it's going to work. 
But uh, let's skip on now. You don't want to see me putting another craft into orbit. That's probably one of the most boring bits about KSP that you've seen a million times over. So let's skip on until we're ready to make our leap out towards Minmus. So here we are. We're ready and we're letting MechChab 2.0 again. I'm still testing this program um, and I'm letting it do the work for me. So we're targeting Minmus as our destination and we've made it create an automatic node which is at our periaps so once the craft goes around to our periaps we will be burning essentially that way away from the planet and in return our apple apps will burn that way out as you can see we're completely off kilter um our plane is a bit shit we could have changed that but uh in retrospect i should have actually changed that when i did this this is all post so you know, I look like an idiot now, but uh, I, I let it go out. I go out there and then I correct it a little late uh, on. But nevertheless, we we still make it, you know, it's fine. We'll get there, no problem. Uh, but we do have to make, like, another two maneuver nodes to get us there anyway. We're, we're fine with fuel now. As you can see, we're just over halfway through our fuel, which is where we should be. Like, most of the fuel is just for getting away from the atmosphere and getting away from this planet. But boy oh boy does that look good I'm not sure what those lines are about it's probably my graphics or something but oh I love this game I really really do love this game and the thing is I'm always gonna have to dream what it would actually be like to travel in space because it's never gonna be a possibility for my generation but uh, you know I find comfort in simulations and as uh, as things get more and more advanced in the terms of uh, like virtual reality, maybe one day we can have full integrated VR where I can feel what it would be like to to explore the universe, you know, myself. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, enough of the shit. Let's talk about getting to Minmus. Now, obviously, I make a couple of adjustments, and that really isn't that fun. So let's skip on to when we enter. Uh, Minmus's sphere of influence and then we'll talk about oh my god the trials and tribulations of landing on a moon so here we are Minmus as you can see I'm in an orbit around it I've just lowered my Apple apps down a little bit and uh, I've just picked where I want to land obviously uh, I, I don't know MechJab doesn't make a very good job of uh, of landing really it's a little bit awkward um, so in the end, I decided to give up on, on the land target function and just make it land anywhere. So we're going to be landing on a bit of a dark patch, but that's not a problem. As long as we land, then that's all I really care about, to be perfectly honest. We're going to land, we're going to get out, stretch our legs, get back in, take off, and come back to Kerbin. But what I want to do is I want to do all that as well as dock at a space station. So yeah, let's give it a go, shall we? Um, now, I'm going to include these as clips, and I'm going to show you what went wrong. Essentially, it took me about 20 attempts after I quick saved um, at a really stupid time, I might add. And, uh, well, yeah, see for yourself. Holy crap, this is horrible. <laughs> Ah, yes, there was a fair few mistakes. This one, however, does go without a problem. Well, it doesn't go without a hitch. That's, that's a bullshit lie. Oh, my goodness. So, we're doing the same thing, basically. We decided to come down backwards uh, and use it like that. The, the, you know, the computer decided that would be a good idea, and we're trying to use MechJeb the best we can, but it just keeps blowing up my ship. And I, I put a save game in a really stupid place, so... It was very hard to correct myself. 
but nevertheless, uh, as you can see, um, this one looks fairly good, you know, like we're coming down, and then I try and deactivate it, and then it goes all wobbly, and I'm like, oh god, and we actually land on the wing, believe it or not, but somehow, like with that nose bump as well, it it stays in one piece, and the engines actually survive for four. Obviously, um, if this was a real spacecraft, we'd probably have a smashed window screen right now, but... Nevertheless, I don't really care. We have it on the surface of the damn moon, so we're going to put our brakes on now and uh, and sit for a minute, check out uh, whatever this guy's name was, German or whatever. And, uh, yep, yeah, everything seems to be intact in here. Uh, he's having a bit of a midlife crisis, a bit of deja vu, a little bit like um, oh, uh, Groundhog Day, where you just relive the same situation over and over again until you make one difference that... Uh, actually makes it so that you actually do uh, get out of that loop, if you've ever seen that movie. So it looks pretty pretty, pretty pretty, yes, very pretty. Uh, as you can see, the planets over there are aligning. Oh, look at this. But we're on this really annoying edge. I was thinking, well, we could probably drive forwards. But looking at our fuel, we've wasted so much. The likelihood of us getting back is, you know, tricky enough as it is. We've also got to dock with a space station. So, I don't know, really, I decided to give him a bit of a walk around, like I said I would. The first Kerbal of mine, at least, on Minmus. There we go, look, climbing down, forgot to put a la Ah, fuck. Yeah, I really need to put a ladder on there, don't I, at some point. Nevertheless, uh, this bloke's going to have a walk around, put his light on so he can see what he's doing. Let him uh, check out the engines and the rest of it since it took such a beating on the landing. I honestly don't know how the wings are even still attached to uh, Kerbin Galactic here, but we're not gonna we're not gonna complain. Physics is on our side today, apparently. And, and look at his expression. He is positively happy. There's a spring in his step. He's happy to be on the safety of an alien moon surface. Yeah, there's not really much safety there. But yeah, we're just checking out that the engines are still intact. Uh, Albeit they are, we're just, uh, you know, just satisfying his need to check everything out. You know, he's a bit of a, an OCD sort of individual, a Kerbinaut. Uh, as you can see, this is what I put together for docking with the space station, by the way. As you can see, the, the nose sticks out a bit. But this is the, the only way I could really figure how to put a large docking node on the end of, uh, on the end of a, like a, an aeroplane, essentially. So uh, that's my ramshackle design. Don't tell him that. But whoa, we're going for a bit of a jump here. Um, careful, you might hurt yourself. Bit of a long way down there. <laughs> but he's enjoying himself, look. Oh, it's lovely to see him. This is probably the only uh, time he's going to get to to see this place. So it's uh, obviously worthwhile. We'll put the RCS units on now so he can find his way back on board Kerbin Galactic. That's definitely where he's heading now, so we're pretty much done with Minmus. It would have been nice to land on the light side, but hey ho, you know, what can you do really? You know, can't get the Kerbals these days, can we? So let's whack him back whoa, we're a bit high there. <laughs> As I said, let's whack him back in the cockpit and uh, and let's take off and go back and do the difficulties of docking with the bloody space station on this fuel load. But that's my mission to Minmus complete, pretty much. Wow, we've, we we made it. A few problems here and there, but uh, we can definitely refine them. Definitely going to have to figure a way of making this land a bit easier. Those uh, those wheels aren't exactly helping, and uh, the, the engine's going first. Probably not the best of ideas, um, especially when they're so spindly, and there's three of them which could break very easily and spill toxic nuclear waste all over the planet. So one last look at Minmus here in all its glory. Look at all those planets heading back to Kerbin. Let's uh, head our way to Ares 3 relay station in uh, 100 kilometer orbit above Kerbin. And uh, yeah, let's get going. So we've got our ascent guidance up here, but we're not going to use it for the first bit. We're going to power all the way up there and then just gently pull up. We don't want to pull up too soon because obviously the rockets will just smash on the floor. Look at this, perfect. That's a plane takeoff right there. We'll put the gear up, we'll put the nose up, and then we'll put the ascent guidance on. There's virtually no gravity here. 
To be perfectly honest, I should have come down as a plane. It would have made this landing a lot easier, but hey, I have to insist on using bloody mech jab, don't I? So I'm actually going to do a video series at some point where I don't use any of this at all. It is a bit cheaty, isn't it, really? Um, yeah. So, yes, let's head back. Let's coast to uh, coast to the Apoapsis, um, the furthest point away from a surface that we've put ourselves, and then we'll burn all the way out. So let's skip on to uh, when we're back. So uh, we're, we're, we're going to go straight back, but I took an opportunity to fly past the moon. Since we're not going to land on the moon this episode, I thought, well, it's probably best if we show it off anyway. So here we are, we're coming within inches, well not inches, a few thousand uh, kilometers there, uh, above the moon's surface in all its glory. Look at that, I love the moon. And uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. So that's a bit of extra awesomeness right there for you. I completely didn't plan that at all. The moon was actually in my way, um, it just so happened that I made my maneuver into a window that happened to hit the moon, so I had to make a few adjustments so I didn't uh, hit the moon or land on it. So here we are, we're making our final adjustments. We're going to skip past this bit in a second. Uh, we're just going to basically put ourselves in a 100 kilometer circular orbit around Kerbin and then making a maneuver, a uh, rendezvous maneuver rather, with the station Ares 3. So there we are, we're just coming out of a phasing orbit that I set up here. Uh, just burning down and this is our home and transfer uh, to the actual station here we're speeding this up obviously because this is really bloody slow otherwise and you've all seen rendezvous before probably again a lot of ksp stuff is, you know you've seen before if there's anything you do want to see that's new or maybe you just don't know how to do i could i could show you or tell you how to do it um just leave a comment below and i'll, I'll get around to making the video no problem uh, so we're just swidgling round, swidgling, wow, that's a new word, swinging round, and uh, we're catching up to the station now, we're going a bit faster than the station, and there it is, so this is hyper speed right here, just skipping past the crap, it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer, and there, whoa, there it is, hello, hello Ares 3, see how my light is shining on it when I spin around there. So we're going to switch over to Ares 3 and obviously retract the panels around the docking node we are attending. I'm going to put on our docking camera here, which is part of a robotics pack that I've installed, uh, which is pretty epic. I can do a video on that as well if you'd like. Well, how to install stuff like that, that's possibly another video idea. Um, but I won't go into how I installed it here, it's far too much information to go into. But uh, yeah, essentially... So it's a long and slow process docking, as you know, and I'm letting the computer do the majority of the work. Look at our fuel. Our fuel is really, like, medically low. Um, so we're going to obviously dock up here, and we're going to send up some fuel and refuel this bad boy for the next episode where we... Well, we, we can do so much more with Curving Galactic, I think, before we send it back to the planet's surface for decommissioning. I think it's got a bit of extra time, maybe for Duna or something. We'll, we'll try that out. And actually land it like a plane. So we're just going to finalize the docking here. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like below. You know, it means a lot to me. And leave a comment for various things, what you want to see next, for example, from this series. Or if you don't want to see any more of it, then I can do something else. Give me some recommendations. I am willing to play whatever you want uh, on my personal channel here on Close and Cast. But I will be trying to do videos once a day. You know, I'm going to try and do that. Probably going to mess it up a few times. Um, but I'll try my best anyway. But look at this. Doesn't this look awesome from this cockpit view of the plane? Uh, the plane cockpit, essentially. With the planet over there and the aurora of the sun rising or setting. I'm not even sure which in the distance. And here we are docking up, which looks fantastic. And there we go. We're docked. Look at that. That's fantastic, isn't it? So, like I say, in the next episode, we're probably going to be going to Duna with the same spacecraft. And we're going to obviously bring up fuel in the meantime, but behind the scenes to refuel this, because we have none to get there. But my name has been Mioni. Thank you very much for watching my video, and I'll see you next time.